Hey guys, so we just finished with our chicken brooder video. Um, we went ahead and cut that one because that's really all you need to have a successful brooder. Especially if you're only doing a few chickens, you can easily set down your water and your feeder in there and keep those clean and it's not a big deal. Because we do more than just a few chickens, if we were to do it that way, they would kick up bedding and clog the water. We'd be changing out water every 30 minutes. So this is kind of an add-on to that. It's not necessary, you don't have to do it, but it's also not hard and it will save you a lot of time while your chicks are in the brooder because you won't have to change out the water and the food as frequently as you would um, the other way. But like I said, it's not, you don't have to do it. Um, if you don't have the setup or you don't want to invest the money in the bigger feeders and stuff, that's fine. It's not necessary, but it does save us a lot of time and effort. So we thought we'd show you guys that portion as well in case you wanted to try it out. All right, we're back. You just learned how to make this. This is awesome. This is fun. This is where your chickens grow. But we want more. We always want more. We're Americans. That's how we do things. So I give you sticks. What do we do with these sticks? We feed them water. Okay. So I bought a six foot stick. I cut it into pieces with my saw. Any cutting implement will do. And they're just slightly larger, wider than my brooder. What I'm going to do with that is I'm going to take these little pieces of rope and I got these, these are rated for 55 pounds because the next one down is 13 pounds. It just wasn't quite big enough. You just want them to where they can handle the weight of your feeder and your waterer. The waterer is more important because that's always heavier than the feed. And we got a waterer. We got a feeder back there too, but we're gonna start with the water. What we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our cord to the rod. And then we're gonna attach the back end to, I can't remember what this is called, but it doesn't matter. It can be a double-sided hook. It can be anything that attaches to both ends. You can use any any hook. Um, we have these. I gotta bring it into focus. Uh, okay, yeah. We have these that unscrew because our chicks tend to stay in the brooder for a little bit longer. And so you want it just at head level. So this lets us kind of adjust down. And then as they get taller, bring that feeder and water up. But you can use anything. I'm just gonna tie this on here. However you want to get it on there. You can tie it on there, you can screw it on there, you can zip tie it on however you get it on there. That is gonna be that I think that length of rope is gonna be really Probably long. Not. That's okay. I'm just doing a basic square knot. If you don't know what a square knot is, it's left over right, followed by right over left. Just not wanting to do it with this type of There we go. The good thing about a square knot is the harder you pull it, the tighter it gets. It will never undo itself. And with this type of cord, since it's a nylon derivative, it'll have this frayed end. What you can do with that frayed end is you can take a lighter to it, get it hot, and then very, very carefully press it into itself and it will stick. Don't recommend using your fingers. I'm dumb, I use my fingers. Use something that won't burn to press it into it. Don't do this at home, kid. Right. Don't do this at home. And then this is going to go first into the chicken wire, down into the brooder, and then connect to this. If you connect, actually, you can connect it to this first because it'll fit the chicken wire. Yeah. And the, that'll probably let you see how deep it needs to. How far it needs to go down. To go down. Oh wow! Honestly, this can just hang from the very top. Yeah, it probably can because of the depth of this one. But that's okay. So I'll wrap this around. And yeah, we'll say about there. And just tie your best navy knot on there. Since I've got just brand new baby chicks, um, if you buy your chicks from a store like Tractor Supply or something, um, they'll probably be a little bit older. 
well, they will be older and a little bit bigger. Um, we get ours for mail order, so they they will mail out the day they hatch, and we'll get them at about two to three days old. So they're they're very small. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, what you want to do is the chicken just needs to be able to reach, right? So if you know about how tall your chickens will be, great. If not, so I don't want to really. It could be a half inch off the bottom. It could be depends on your water and depends on your chicks, but you just want to get them to a spot oh, where. Okay. So I need to pull it up higher. It's not. Well, and you can probably tighten those all the way until they touch you. Yeah, but it's not. But, oh, I know. I'm just saying. So, but it's a process of elimination here. I didn't know how long to cut this. And we've obviously never done this before. This way. We've done chickens this way. We've never done our waterers this way. Well, and I think our other brooder was a little bit taller. Our other tub was a little bit yeah. taller than this. Around. Yeah, that'll be good. Because that still gives me a lot of room to tighten that. Sure we're done done before you actually well I just went through hold on. Alright, that's done. And that's up. And now it's adjustable. That should be really good right there. Yep. So basically what you're gonna end up with is this. At whatever length and whatever your hook is, but you're gonna end up with this. This is gonna feed down through the chicken wire and it's just gonna hold this slightly off the ground because the issue with chicks is that they kick their bedding a lot and so they'll kick them into the bottom of these waters and clog it up and they won't have water and baby chicks more than they need food need water so and they'll do it a dozen times a day yeah now if you're not going to do this if you're just going to have the the small ones that you can buy at the store i would still suggest putting that water on top of a brick or a bowl, anything that you can find that lifts it off yeah, the bedding. Last year. Yeah, so because if you don't, you will literally be filling that water constantly. Mm -hmm. So you want that water up so that they can't kick all, and they will still find a way to kick stuff into it, but <laughs> um, just not near at the at the rate. <laughs> and I'm just doing the next one. And also, I was gonna. I don't have one in here. I thought we did, but we don't have one in here to show you guys. But just some tips for brooding chicks, if you've never done it before. Um, they are gonna need 24 or seven access to food and water. If you buy yours at the store, um, they, they've probably acclimated to food and water by then. If you get yours in the mail, they're just a couple days old when when you get them they will have never they will have never seen water or food before so you are going to have to well that one's not as big of a deal um, <laughs> you you will have to like take one of their little heads and show them the water and get them to drink that way also you'll need a heat lamp and unless Unless you have a very warm setup, which if you have that setup, you're probably not watching this video. Yeah. So you'll need a heat lamp. Um, you can buy those at any any farm supply store. Um, they'll look a lot like spotlights. You can even use like an old spotlight if you have it. The only important part is that you'll need a red light bulb. Chickens um, need to sleep and they won't sleep in white light and if they don't sleep they can become cannibalistic they'll peck each other they'll eat each other they'll just get sick and die because they haven't slept so you want to make sure that that light bulb is um, red and you can buy those at, at the same go to any farm supply store over in the chicken section and you'll see everything that you need farm supply or amazon yeah amazon for sure i'm just saying if you go into a farm supply store they'll have it all in one area what we'll have to do with this one is just find something to prop this up a little bit yeah 
put something underneath it, but since it fits on top, we put something yeah. underneath it. So I'm going to unhook this and let's put the lid on. Put the lid on. It's a little unwieldy. Just down through. And when we find something, lift that up a little bit. And what we have to do is reach through here, yes. okay. lift the water up, hook it on. Okay, guys, so here we have, you can see the water's um, off a little bit. So that will hopefully stop them from kicking stuff in. But this is the brooder. So you'll put pine shavings down or straw. Um, when we set this up for actual chickens, what we will probably do is move them closer to the edge so that we can put the heat lamp in the middle and give them a place um, to get some heat and then also to kind of go over to the corner if they're over if they're overheated, they can get away from it too. But this is the whole brooder feed and water system. Um, and like I said, it's about 25, 25, $30, depending on where you get your materials and what you have access to, but. Yeah. And you don't have to go as big. They're, they have much smaller feeders and waterers. We went big because we're getting a lot. Yeah. And, and I have some little ones. I thought I, I had them. They're in the shed. Okay. Well. There's, they're about the size of um, just a regular, maybe like an extra large glass that you would get at a fast food place. A really big hamster feeder. With yeah. a different bottom, but you know. Yeah, so they have very small ones and those are affordable. They're a couple bucks. I mean, if you're only getting anywhere from five to 10 chickens, that'll be plenty. Same yeah. with this brooder. I mean, you can see that it's a really large size. If you're, you don't need to get a tub that big um, if you're not gonna get as many chickens, but all of this stuff is the same regardless of which kind you get but that's it that's that's how you set it up now just add food water and chicks right so we will probably when our chicks come in i don't know if i'll get a video out or not but we will definitely be doing some updates on instagram pictures of our new chicks in their brooder and how that's all working out so um my Instagram on this channel, and then I will, yeah. And then within a year, you'll have those. Yes, yeah. And so I'll also link um, James's Instagram down at the bottom. You guys can follow him. Um, and then a lot of times he will have, uh, especially when the spring comes, he'll have a lot of videos up on his channel cooking with the food that we grow and um, the eggs that we harvest and all that so especially now that I have a very special diet being diabetic I have to cook very special meals yeah so but they're still really tasty so I will link all of his information in the bottom too so you guys can go check him out um, and if it's been like I said we, we're about two weeks to chick day so if it's towards the end of the month, 1st of April, and you haven't seen a chick video, check us out on Instagram, and that's probably where you can see updates on chicks. But thank you guys for hanging out, and I hope that this video was informative. See you later. Mm -hmm.